Hello everybody and welcome back to another One Piece um, review and recap. And so this was a pretty interesting uh, chapter right off the bat um, because Orochi comes back and you guessed it, he's a cowering wimp. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, it's a pretty cool backdrop I think um, art-wise too with the whole panel with him running into the scabbards and stuff and them being shocked at Orochi. They look more kind of annoyed that Orochi's still alive, which, I mean, I am too, considering I was under the impression that maybe, maybe, uh, he would still be doing something else, or that he'd be fighting Usopp or Momo, but they're like, no, every single scabber gets their own moment and cuts his head off. And I was like, what, what what's the point of bringing him back? I mean, I don't know if this is going to be a permanent thing where they bring him back or what, um, but definitely it's one of those things where I'm pretty annoyed that Unless he does something. I mean, he falls in this chapter, too. So, I, I don't know if maybe it's not relevant that all of those um, that all of those heads being cut off is actually not something that really matters. But I would really love to know whether or not just cutting his head off actually does anything. Because at the end of this chapter, we see his head roll the exact same way that Kaido did when he cut it. So, I don't know. I just am pretty baffled and confused and... Somewhat annoyed, but the more interesting thing is Raizo facing off against Fukurakujo. I think that's going to be something that was anticipated for quite a long time. People were talking about this since 2018, um, when Raizo said he used to be part of the Onowa Bansho. So this is definitely one of those hype things. I don't exactly know what this kind of fight will entail, but I'm still pretty hyped and pretty excited for it. Um, and then, again, we get another kind of like a, a throwback moment in one piece um with kaido in his hybrid form and big mom using like a kind of like they're staggering and they you know they kind of have this stance that looks kind of like the Broggy and dorgy uh kind of attack that uh they used way back in little garden um it's pretty ridiculously powerful and i love the lighting shot that everyone's like kind of looking while zoro just kind of steps in the way I don't know how Zoro was able to, to redirect the blast, but the island is getting just absolutely destroyed at this point, and I can't even imagine if Onigashima will stay standing anymore. Um, but what's more interesting right after that is that Luffy seems like he's not in the 10-minute period anymore um, that we have seen him. I mean, he isn't using hockey yet, but still, there's something going on. Uh, there's a really funky-looking panel of him like smiling after he realizes that that everything does affect him, uh, affect Kaido anyways. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> Kaido kind of does something dumb where, you know, you know, Luffy first dodges him, but then he uses, like, this attack where he, like, tries to, like, actually use lightning. And, I mean, Kaido at this point should know that lightning doesn't really affect Luffy, so I, I don't know exactly what he was thinking. Uh, <laughs> but it's still a pretty awesome panel because, like, Kaido is actually using his tail to propel himself. And then he actually, like, uses a Boro Blast, like, without having to be in Dragon Mode. So that, that was pretty damn cool. Um, and then we get probably the most controversial part of the chapter where, uh, you know, I, I do love Law, uh, Kid, and Zoro teaming up to um, to actually take out, you know, or at least remove a Yonko. Um, because... The <laughs> I think it was a necessary move because Big Mom is just way too powerful, but the fact is that Big Mom is still still going to be fine, and I, I hope that she doesn't come back to Elbath or something because that would be pretty annoying. Um, but anyways, they, they actually Zoro actually cuts Prometheus into like a bunch of little pieces, um, and then <laughs> Killer's going after Napoleon, and I'm surprised Napoleon wasn't like being nervous again like he was earlier in this arc. Um, but then it's like, you know, Kid actually does this cool move where he, like, purposely takes damage from Big Mom just so he can, like, use this, like, rocket and launch her into the sky, which is pretty, pretty awesome, actually. I mean, you know, balls by, you know, Kid to be actually able to take a hit from Big Mom. And then, you know, Kid uses attack uh, ability and actually just pushes her over with a boulder and just throws her off, um, you know, into off the island, which we know that either the Big Mom ship is going to save her or um, the, um, uh, her sword, I can't remember the name right now, it was going to save her. So either way, somebody's going to save her. Um, 
either that or Kaido does. But at the end of the day, they needed to separate these two Yonko. Um, I don't know why Big Mom keeps getting bullied um, by everybody, but I guess that's what happens when you write a, an extremely powerful character and you don't know exactly what to do with that character. Um, it's too bad that that she had to go out the way that she did, because um, I was thinking maybe, maybe they could have everybody but, Lu but Luffy and Kid versus Kaido, you know, Kid, Luffy and Kid versus Kaido and everyone else versus Big Mom, but... It seems extremely unlikely about that scenario. I, I don't know if she's going to be done with Wano, but it does kind of seem like that. This is a very, very fast chapter. Um, especially because it, it, it just has all these, like, amazing panels of, like, characters clashing and stuff, which is cool. But at the same time, it's kind of like, I wish, I wish there was a little bit more. Um, that we actually saw some characters heading to the rooftop, like um, Yamato and Momo, um, or just something like that, you know, or at least they head off to the scabbards. Again, another one of the scabbards is actually being occupied. Um, I, I think he, Raizo might actually do a little better than, you know, against Fukurakujo than maybe Eno will do against uh, Jack. But at the end of the day, it's going to be really fun to actually see where these fights go. And, well, I can't really, can't wait to see more of these. I mean, the, this was one of the hypest chapters, um, without a doubt. Um, and the, the, the title with it being Hell is such a cool reference to both, you know, uh, apparently as, the, as there was like this translation about how it was uh, a reference to Buddha concept, um, uh, and it's also referenced in the last chapter, um, where, uh, Luffy says that I'll be in Hell if I end up having to face off against two Yonko, um. And then also, like, it's pretty cool, like, the, the little, the color spread is really cool. Um, there's a lot of characters that we I haven't seen in a long time. Robin looks like, that's probably one of my favorite Robin outfits. I just love women when they wear leather jackets like that. I think it's pretty stylish. Uh, it's, it's a pretty cool look, and especially with the snow and all that, um, it's definitely one of my favorite color uh, spreads, although it is a little bit simplistic, but I do love it. And uh, anyways, uh, I'll see you guys next time, most likely when I do an Attack on Titan review. So see you then. Bye.